Right, we're now going to look at children's beds and bunk beds and high beds in particular and the things you need to be aware of when assembling those items. BS 8509 2008 with the 2011 amendment for children's beds. The basic definition of a children's bed is a bed designed for use by children with an internal width of under one meter or a thousand millimeters and under 600 millimeters high. It does not specify the length. Specific types of children's beds include a cot bed. It's a cot that can be converted into a bed by the removal of the side rails and must conform to BS EN 716 when it's used as a cot and this standard when it is used as a bed. A toddler bed is a bed for use by a child from 18 months to four years and it must be less than 1500 millimeters in internal length which is approximately six foot. A junior bed is for use by a child over four years old. Regardless, the age ranges for all children's beds must be indicated in the instructions. So for example, if it's a bed for use by a child over six years old, it must actually say so. Various probes are used to test the bed. Head probes, hip probes, circular probes, V-shaped, irregular, two types of finger probe, bell chains, etc. Lots of different things to see, to try to see whether um, accidents that have happened in the past could happen again on this product. The sizes and dimensions of how to use them in the tests are all included within the standard. We don't need to go into the detail. But the main thing they're checking for is the entrapment of the head and neck to prevent strangulation or a broken net, neck. Now, cot beds and toddler beds, the completed openings where the hip probe can pass through, the head probe must also be able to pass through. So this is between railings and things like that. If a child can get out, it shouldn't be possible for its body to get out but not its head. Junior beds allow the 12 mil probe to pass through but not the 25 mil probe. You think about 12 mil that's enough for your fingers to get through but not your arm. Um, allow 60 mil probe through but not the 75 mil probe so an arm can get through but not the rest of the body. I think that's what that's driving out there. So all these things are being tested for. Also entrapment in the bed base or between the bed base and other structures. So on cot beds and toddler beds, a 60mm probe should not pass between any gap in the slats. A 25mm probe must not pass between the bed edge or the headboard and footboard and bed base. And similarly on a junior bed, instead of 60mm, it's 75mm. This is to stop the child um, falling through as indicated. Children's beds must be placed flush against the wall or with a gap of at least 300 millimetres so a child cannot fall and get trapped between the bed and the wall. In the previous standard it was 275, the previous version of the standard it was 275 mil and there are still products on the market where you will see this but under the new standard it must be flush against the wall or at least 300 millimetres away from it which is 30 centimetres or a foot. This prevents a child from falling down and suffocating under the bread sheets and not being able to get out so this distance is crucial. Product marking. All children's beds must be marked with this standard. BS 8509 2008 plus Amendment 1 2011. All junior beds must also be marked with the following text. Warning, not suitable for children under four years. You can see here on this particular Argos bed, it's quite clear that the standard that it's been tested to is written on it. It's obviously a junior bed as well. So at the point of sale in the shop or on a website etc the product should be marked with the standard that it has been tested to i.e. BSA 509 2008 plus A1 2011 and a specific statement made to that effect so it should be clear that it's been tested to this standard and it must be marked as followed and the instruction must be marked as follows important keep for future reference warning do not place child's bed near heat sources windows or other furniture Warning, do not use this child's bed if any part is broken, torn or missing. And on junior beds, warning, not suitable for children under four years old. So re-emphasising these key things. They've also got to be marked with the standard itself and the registered trade name, trademark of the manufacturer, distributor or importer or retailer who actually had it tested 
so you know who's had it tested and who's claiming that it's been tested. A means of identification such as a model number, the age range for which the bed is intended, the size of the mattress to be used with the bed, and whether the bed is designed to be dismantled for storage or transportation. This must all be marked out clearly in the instructions. And finally, if applicable, an assembly drawing list and description of all parts and tools required in diagrams of all the bolts and fastenings are required. This is basically your assembly instructions. A statement that all fittings should always be tightened properly and checked periodically. I think that's key and you should always point that out to customers. Cleaning and maintenance recommendations. And remember, children are likely to jump, bounce and climb. Therefore, furniture should not be placed close to windows, other furniture, blinds, curtain, poles, cords, etc. The bed should be either close to a wall or have a gap of 300 millimetres to stop a child falling there and suffocating. If lights are included, a warning about heat and electrical shock must be on the light fittings if it's applicable. A recommendation that any replacement parts are purchased from the supplier or manufacturer. So, just remember about uh, children's beds. Cot beds and toddler, toddler beds, effectively all slats must be no more than 60 millimetres apart. There must be no gaps between the slatted base and the headboard of more than 25 millimetres. And junior beds, as above, but the gap in between the slats can be up to 75 millimetres. So when you're putting the slats on these things, always remember to get them as close to the headboard and footboard as possible and make sure the gaps aren't too big. Never throw the instructions away. There are lots of warnings on the product itself and in the instructions. It's your responsibility to point these out to the customer because they won't necessarily see them otherwise and they won't see the instructions because you're the person that's looked at them. So always leave the instructions with the customer and highlight any warnings to them. You'll also see on plenty of beds, mattress height markings and the age that the bed should be used for. There's an odyssey here in the British Standards We've already told right at the start that in the British standards, they make it clear that standards can overlap. For example, British standards for toys can apply to children's furniture, such as not using lead paint um, for obvious reasons. Now, BS 8509 2008, Amendment 1 2011 for children's beds, the one we've just been talking about, specifically states the standards for bunk beds are separate. And that's BSEN 747. Now the latest revision of those is 2015, which is obviously four years after this standard was mentioned. So the current standard for bunk beds, uh, EN 747 2012, the amendment 1 2015, includes things for warnings and head entrapment, which weren't in the previous standards. So it has to be assumed that Pretty much the same sort of things we've just been talking about here for children's beds actually apply to bunk beds as well, whereas they didn't in the previous standards. So we're now going to talk about bunk beds. So all the stuff on bunk beds here is in addition for a bunk bed for a child to what we've just discussed. So there's a picture of the bunk bed. You'll notice on this particular model, the ladders can go at the right hand side or the left hand side. And there are plenty of bunk beds like this. The only thing to notice about the ladders is never put the ladder near a window as we discovered previously in the instructions don't put uh, beds near to windows because that's where the child is likely to get into it so bs en 747 uh, the 2015 amendments to the 2012 version for bunk beds and high beds it applies to beds over 1400 millimeters long with an internal length and under 1200 millimeters wide with a top dead bed bed base of 600 mil or higher. The previous standard, the 2012 version, only applied to top bed bases above 800 millimeters. So they brought that height down and it did not include head entrapment safety requirements, such as things putting the slats in specific positions and being 75 mil apart, etc. And the instructions for use, warnings and markings have also been amended. So always check the year on the standards included with any bunk beds or high beds you're building. And bear in mind that head entrapment is now a key issue. Solid bed bases are tested in various positions with forces of up to 1,000 newtons or 100 kilograms. 
having the load placed 10,000 times. So steps for bunk beds have similar tests completed. So this is to ensure that the bed, if a child's bouncing up and down on the bed, it's not going to collapse. Uh, a force of 500 newtons is applied for up to 30 seconds at any point where the upper and lower bunks are likely to separate. Now, stability tests are also carried out to see if the bed can topple over under certain conditions. Now, 500 newtons is about 50 uh, kilograms, so just bear those uh, measurements in mind. Because what I've got to remember is, a child could be on the top bunk and lean on one side of the bunk, causing the bunk to try to separate. Therefore, it's not sufficient just to rely on the weight of the upper bunk on the lower bunk to hold it together. If a force of 50 kilograms, which is you know a small adult really, um, could separate the bunk beds, then they need to be uh, fixed together. Now, they're normally connected together with dowels and screws or bolts, which are inserted to secure the dowels. Um, and these must be fitted properly. Point 12, a child could be on the top bunk and lean over on one side in a similar case as before, causing the bunk bed to tip over. If a bunk bed or a high bed has attachments for the wall, these must be used to prevent that from happening. That's why they've been supplied. Now, all slats must be fastened down no more than 75 mil apart, no more than 25 mil from the headboard and footboard. Beds manufactured to EN747 2007 and EN747 2012 are still on sale in the UK and do not comply with some of the above points, particularly um, points 11 and 13 that we've mentioned. So make sure the bunks are attached together so they can't separate and make sure you fasten down the slats no more than 75 millimetres apart when you're building them.